So the last talk of this, the session is Ganimation, an anatomically aware phase animation from a single image. Uh, this is work by Albert Pumarola, uh, Antonio Agudo, Aleix Martinez, Alberto Sanfeliu, and Frances Moreno. And Albert Pumarola will give the talk. Thank you for the introduction. So today I'll be speaking about our work on facial expression generation. I'm sure all of you can relate to these emotions when submitting work into a conference. So at su the submission deadline, you're kind of happy, but you're also really tired. Then uh, when the reviews get delayed, you get like super pissed with the reviewers who didn't submit on time. And normally, uh, when you have to read your email to the decision to the authors, um, it's pretty scary. But then if you get accepted, it's pretty nice, and it gets even crazier if you get an oral notification. So this clearly exemplifies what previous methods were capable of doing, which is generating expressions out of a discrete set of emotion categories, like angry, scared, happy, and surprised. But it would be way more interesting if not only we would generate these images, but also if we could interpolate between them. So, and this is exactly what our work is capable of doing. So here you can see the results of our model, not only generating the expressions, but also interpolating between them in a realistic way. And in fact, all these frames are generated. There's not a single one which is real. So to state our work, we here present a differentiable render capable of changing the expression of a person not previously seen on training and just from a single image. And to do this, we have two main components. The first one is a self-learned first attention, which is capable of focusing into specific parts of the face. And the second key component is an anatomically aware expression representation, which does not require a 3D phase model, nor an initialization method. And also, the entire method is trained in an unsupervised manner. So this is how our model looks at test time. So given an input image of a person under an arbitrary expression and a desired expression, we can change the original expression into the desired expression by and also maintaining the person identity. So as I was saying, there are two key components to make this possible. The first one is our expression representation. And the second one is our generation mechanism. So we do not uh, condition our model on discrete emotion categories like previous works. But instead, we use action units defined by the fact system, where every action unit is directly related to some muscles on the face, meaning that we encode our expression as a vector where every element represents the level of contraction of a muscle in the face. So for example, we can see in the top left image that to produce a happy looking expression, we have to contract the muscles related to action unit 6, 12, and 25. And we can even obtain more happy looking expressions by changing the level of contraction of these muscles and even adding to the mix other muscles. Here you can see the result of our method when changing one action unit at a time with different levels of intensity. But then, of course, to generate more complex expressions like the ones we saw at the beginning, we can just combine multiple of these ones at the same time. And for example, in the bottom right, you can see that we can control how open the eyes of the person uh, are just by simply tuning the intensity of action unit 45. The second key component is our generation mechanism. So normally, generators will regress all the pixel values of the output image. But in our case, we are not interested in that, because most of the pixels should be directly copied from the input image. Um, at the end, 
only the pixels which are directly related to the expression should be changed. So to obtain this behavior, we've embedded a self-learned attention mechanism, which is trained in a completely unsupervised manner. So every time we have to generate an image, we first uh, detect what pixels should be changed, and also how important are they to obtain the desired expression. And then these selected pixels are changed by a regress color delta. So in this case, for example, where you have this like sort of neutral looking expression and you want to add a smile, I'll look how our, our generation mechanism and the attention in synchrony, they are, the attention mechanism is forcing the generator to only change those of those pixels with darker activation values in the attention mask, which are those around the mouth. And the rest of the pixels will be directly copied from the original image. So again, just to remember, this is how our model looks at test time. Given an input image and a desired expression, we can change the original image by the desired expression while maintaining the person identity. But during training, this gets a bit more complicated because we don't have ground truth on how the output image should look like. So we have to add several modules just for training um, to make uh, this possible. So this is how our, our loss looks like. Um, so it's just too dense for here to go into detail. And I'll try to explain it in a more a graphical way, but if you have any doubts or comments, you can come later to the poster session. So at the beginning, everything is just pure noise. Uh, so we can add a discriminator in order to force the model to produce photorealistic images. But then the task of minimizing the error becomes trivial because the attention mechanism can simply copy the entire input image into the output. So in order to prevent our model from converging into the identity function, we first penalize the weight of the attention mechanism. And also, we add an expression regressor to penalize the difference between the desired expression and the generated one. But then, of course, it's not like we just want to generate a random person with the desired expression, but we want to maintain the input person. So in order to do this, we add a cycle consistency loss, uh, which forces the model to be able to recover the original image from the generated one. So going now into the experimentation, given the input image in the left and a desired expression, we can generate the images on the right. But again, the beauty of our model is that we cannot just uh, change the expression of the person, but also we can interpolate between the input and the desired expression and generate these nice looking uh, animations. So for example, you can see in the top row, you can see the animation, in fact, in the right, where we can go from this neutral to a big smile in a really nice and natural way. Uh, here we present a comparison with the state of the art. So although our model was not designed to generate uh, the emotions out of a discrete set of categories, we can still do it because we know exactly what action units or which muscles should we contract in order to express an emotion. Notice that our results on the bottom show that our images are stiffer than previous methods. Here we show some results when pushing the our model to the limit by showing it challenging illumination and texture conditions, like stone-like skin, drawings, and even crazy uh, tattoos on the face. So for example, on the top right image, you can see how our model is capable of changing the expression out of this drawing while maintaining the texture and the style of the image. Also, 
you can see that our attention mask is preventing our model from changing the static elements of the image, like the hair and the glasses, by tagging those pixels with white activations in the attention mask, meaning that all those pixels are going to be directly copied from the input image. Also, we would like to share some failure cases which can occur with extreme expressions and non-human anthropomorphic distributions. But it's not like our model gets crazy, but a lot of art artifacts start to appear. Last but not least, we want to show our model ability to deal with images in the wild. And for example, in these ones, um, there are strong and challenging illumination conditions. For example, in some of the pirated faces, you can see some big changes in illumination between different parts of the faces, and we are robust to that. Also, we can deal with low-resolution faces, like the pirate in the back. And mainly, we are robust also to these low-resolution faces because we do not require to fit any 3D face model, nor we have to initialize our method with correspondences. Also, in, in the bottom row, we show how our model is robust to non-typical human-like skin texture, like this blue tone of the skin. Sorry. And remember that we are changing these expressions of people that were not previously seen on training and just from this single image. We don't need any further information. So to conclude, we have presented here a differentiable render capable of changing the expression of a person, not previously on training, and only from a single image. To do this, um, we have two key components. The first one is a self-learned attention mechanism uh, that helps us transition between real and fake patches on the image, and also an anatomically aware expression representation, which does not require to fit any 3D face model nor initialize our method. And the entire method was trained in an unsupervised way. Also, we've shown that our model is robust to images in the wild. We have our code public, so please go and check it out. If you have any question or would like to discuss some issues, just please come by to the poster session. Thank you. OK, if someone cannot wait until the poster session and wants to ask a question now. So maybe I'll ask a question. So it seems that your method relies a lot on these action units, and I have Actually, I have several questions. So the first one is, how easy it is to extract these action units from, from a video? Because this would allow you to transfer the expression from one character to another. Mm. Um, and, and I also want, would like to know like, how easy it is to annotate the images with these action units. Um, I guess I would like you to elaborate a little bit more on yeah. this. OK, so it's pretty hard, I think, to, um, to um, um, manually annotate these action units, because you need to be like sort of an expert in order to detect all of them. Um, so in this work, we are relying on previous detectors. Um, so yeah, basically, the better the detector we have, the better our model is going to perform. So sorry, so these detectors were trained like using annotated data then? or So some yeah. experts had to annotate this data? Yeah, so exactly. So some experts normally. Uh, people from the psychology uh, area, annotated data sets. And then uh, we are using, actually, a really simple method based on, on linear uh, regressors. I see. So, so then when you say unsupervised, you mean, so what do you mean with, because then it's, yeah. it's a little bit supervised in a way, right? OK, so we, we say that it's unsupervised, because at the end, where we are trying to regress is the output image, so changing the expression from the uh, original image. And we don't have ground truth on how the output image should look like. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why we say it's unsupervised, because we don't have any like yeah, supervision yeah. to do that. Got it. Thanks. 
Any other questions? Um, then maybe I'll ask another question. So regarding the, the video question, have you tried? Like, I mean, can you generate smooth um, sequences or? OK, so I've shown some animations mm -hmm. where from one image we can generate like an animation between the input uh, real expression and a desired one. And we can like start concatenating this in order to generate a video. But we have not tried like with an input video. Always we input an image. But okay. we can generate videos so, out of an image. So do, you, so do you have any thoughts on how you would extend this method so that you can actually yeah. animate the person um, I don't know, talking or having expressions over time? Yeah. So not, not interpolating across yeah. expressions, but rather having a video. Yeah, I think that to do that, um, you would need to change a bit the representation. Because action units give you a really good representation because they are really robust and they are just a few and they are continuous. But for example, you cannot uh, move the, the lips in a very realistic way if you want to speak. So you would have to add like some sort of landmarks and other uh, representations in order to improve uh, this and really be able to generate realistic videos. OK, yeah, thanks. So if there's no further questions, let's thank the speaker again and all the speakers of the session.